Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from the Automator, and today we're, we're talking to Descalada, who uh, did that uh, amazing script that we've been playing with from the UI Automation, um, and you can get the link here and in other videos we've done in the link above me, uh, Descalada, and, and I think yeah. you, said you were in Estonia, is that right? Yes, hello, glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, we, just before we start recording, I was asking you, so... You, one is you said you've been using AutoHotKey for a couple, two to three years. I think you said, right? Yeah, about three years. Uh, okay. On yeah. And then you said also you're not a programmer by by training. Uh, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As uh, I say, can um, can probably uh, attest you uh, reading the source code of the library. Uh, no, I am not that programmer. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know that that's a lot of code in there. I think you you actually worked a little bit more in the browser stuff more than the the main code itself, right? Uh, actually, no. I think the main code uh, got much more attention. Right. The thing is that I have seen that. The, uh, so this particular your the UI automation library that I saw in there is, is you wrote the whole thing. Is that what you're saying? Um, no. Um, ah, okay. I, I took uh, the JetRows uh, you right, exactly. automation interface and just uh, built upon it, right. added a few uh, new methods, and then the UI browser okay. library, that is, yes, mine. That That's the one that I know. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. So basically, you ah, mainly yeah. worked on the browser uh, implementation of the UIA stuff. So um, I, I hadn't actually played that much with it, so I cannot really comment on it. But what I did like about it was the ease of use when, when I was going ahead and just grabbing code and trying to automate something with the browser was very easy, right? Um, the, the, we were able to see the elements very easily with it. One, yeah. one thing we ran into, and we didn't, like, as Isaiah said, we didn't look at um, the actual web browsing component of it, but is there a way to trigger, like, a page load? Um, not, um, after you put in a URL into the, the URL placeholder, for lack of a better term, um, to basically make it say go, to go navigate, is do you have you tackled that? Uh, do you mean um, how to make it navigate after setting the URL? Right. Yeah, yeah, you can right. just uh, the just set the uh, second argument, I think, to true. Okay. Then it will oh, automatically. Cool. So, <laughs> let me let me let me let me clarify something there because there's, there's a little bit of a disconnect right there. So when I was working, when I was doing the automation of the browser, Joe, I was not using the browser component that right. he's referring to. I know. So, that's so, what I so said. yeah, I said we didn't. Uh, oh, okay. I said maybe. Right. But then no. the thing is. Right. But his answer, his answer, I think, is based on the browser component because he says, like, right. you said the second value to true. But let me try to explain to him what we actually did. Yeah, okay. Actually, using using the normal UIA interface, I just went ahead and connected to the address bar up top, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that you can get patterns for elements. So the pattern that I could get from that one was just the value pattern. So I could set the address to whatever I wanted, but I could not hit, like, go on it. So, um, what we were wondering yeah. without yeah. the browser, without the browser component that you worked with, was there a way that you have actually um, were able to tell the browser to navigate to a website? Uh, no. <laughs> exactly. You see that? Yeah. That's where the disconnect to the answer was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my my library just uses uh, Control Send uh, Enter. All oh, right. Okay. So you're basically doing what I ended. I ended up doing. And I was just using a send command to send the enter. Yeah, yeah. But you're using the control send to that yeah. particular element. Okay. Right. Now, do you actually have you played with the browsing part enough to know? Like, is it a a good good enough replacement compared to either Chrome.hk or Rufidium? Can, does can you navigate? You know, not navigate, but can you uh, you know click what you want and get the values you want? Let, let me let me just ask this Colada something. So, um, was it easy for you to actually access the DOM with your implementation? Like, can you access the DOM of the web page you're browsing on? Uh, so you can't uh, actually access the DOM itself. Exactly. Um, you you can kind of do it uh, with. Um, with the JavaScript functions, but uh, it 
it's kind of a hacky bypass. Uh, so with uh, UI automation, you can uh, just access the parts uh, that uh, you as a user can see or interact with. So for example, you can uh, search for a hyperlink element and then call click on it because you would be able to see that something is an URL and point your right. mouse at it and click. Uh, but, but not the actual underlying uh, DOM, no. Right, exactly. So basically, for for that reason, I think, um, uh, well, at least Rufadium is a better approach on accessing the actual DOM, and it has a few it has a few um, functions that work on elements like query selector. You can query, uh, you know, DOM elements, but the UI A automation um, is not really about accessing the DOM, but about accessing specific individual elements so um and this is what you were talking about and you and i were talking about joe so there are different tools for different needs if you don't need to access the dom and you just need to access a specific thing then the uia automation might help you out very easily but when you need to access the dom directly i don't think the uia might help you as much as you might need right so, yeah, yeah. Um, in most situations, I think um, libraries like uh, Chrome.dhk and uh, Rubidium are much better options. Uh, but um, the situation I encountered um, was a lockdown computer system uh, where you can't use um, external um, programs like Rubidium right. to, oh, right. to okay. Chrome. But right. you right. can yeah. use yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention it, of course. We also tried to automate um, something on the Udemy page, and it could detect that we were using Refidium, uh, which was really right. interesting. So it, anyway, that, and again, which is, it kind of follows on the point you just made. If you either, it, it just depends what you're doing, but yeah, if you can't install something new, this is, hey, at least it's there. I also say it's like, if you're doing something, click a button, you know, or, or click two buttons. Right. Hey, probably fine, right? It's. Yeah, right. go go scrape a website? No, probably not. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's gonna be a yeah. little bit more complex than what yeah. you think. But but actually, it, you just brought uh, up a topic that is really important. So again, this is the reason why you need different tools. Um, the UIA, the UI automation tool, is native to Windows. It is uh, something that is installed on every Windows computer. So um, if you just have to install the library to connect to it. You don't have to download anything additional that might be uh, blocked. Like, for example, Rufadium needs the Chrome.exe executable, and probably executables are going to be blocked in certain computers. So that's where you would need a different tool. You cannot use Rufadium because it's blocked, for example. The other really cool thing about it, if you think about it, compared to, I'm not going to say everything else, but kind of close to it, is um, you can learn using the UI automation approach and automate other tools as well, right? Versus if you learn the Lorifidium class, you're doing that to automate Chrome or a Chromium browser or whatever, or even Firefox, whatever, a browser. But you're not going to be out automating Outlook with it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the, the, once you get familiar with the syntax, even if you do have a different uh, class or a subclass or whatever for the, the web browsing stuff, it's still all the same kind of the the information, the elements, the IDs, that kind of stuff. It's all very similar, right? In that sense, so the learning can yeah. be right. And as you probably know, you can also automate uh, programs that are uh, web based or like Electrum based, right? Such as the Microsoft Teams, yes. for example, which yes. you couldn't otherwise uh, access or uh, automate easily. Well, in, in a client of ours, they reached out to me and he wanted to automate doing something. And he was basically just trying to click a button, but he, which won't surprise you with the auto hockey community, right? But he's like, hey, I got like 20 bucks or, you know, 25 bucks. And I'm like, we, we can't even begin to touch it because um, it, it'll take us, you know, it, it just depends. It's, it's a trial and error thing when you're not using, um, when you're using Refidium or Chrome or auto control, this and that. But this approach might be simple enough and, you know, very quick and easy to implement. So it, I think it does open doors for people. Now, have you have you been using UIA on anything other programs? Um, 
So um, I've, I've mostly been using it on Chrome. Um, the um, examples I have created um, are based on the Windows Explorer, right? Uh, yeah. I have also played around with uh, automizing uh, Microsoft uh, Teams. Um, but um, yeah, some native applications like the <laughs> calculator and notepad, right? right. Uh, but mostly web, uh, web applications. Cool. Yeah, I mean, because that, you know, it's one of the, the things that's so sad with uh, nowadays that AutoHotKey with its controls that it can automate, it's amazing, but almost no programs use them anymore. You know, only older programs. Yeah. And then you have DaVinci Resolve or Zoom or um, <laughs> um, what was the uh, themes, you know, and you're like, there's... there's Skype, there's, Skype, those kind of things. Like, yeah, none of that really can hard. be automated easily. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and so the other one, Zayas and I were chatting the other day, and this is one of the things that took me a long time to wrap my brain around, but most people, when they start using AutoHotKey, they use AutoHotKey to mimic human, mimic a human, like clicking things and doing stuff, usually sending keystrokes or a mouse click or whatever, right? Um, we typically use AutoHotKey via an API in some way, so like connecting to Calm or... Um, or doing API calls or DLL calls or controls also, right? But a programmatic way to automate things, which is much, much more reliable, right? Much faster, um, much less likely to break if you give it to someone else on another computer to run. Um, and that was where I realized with the UIA approach, it's almost like it's a blend of the two. You're doing it programmatically. However, you are limited to like what humans can do, or at least somewhat like that. Does that sound... Correct. Yeah, pr pretty much. <laughs> um, but uh, but uh, it, that isn't a very big limitation, right? Because um, the the programs are created to be interacted with. Sure. So yeah. You can do pretty much anything uh, with it uh, that a human uh, can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and also the, compared to when, and maybe you've solved this with your the stuff you've done with the web scraping, but it if there is you know getting an actual getting text out of certain fields sometimes can be a pain if it if it doesn't have a are they set to values or whatever? I mean I, I haven't looked that hard at, at you know what you've done in there and we haven't played with it a lot, but I know compared to if you're actually connecting to the DOM, it's amazing what you have access to, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying with UIA, it it still just kind of depends on the programmers and how they set up their program, if they've named them properly or gave them good IDs to use to make it easier to connect to. But it... uh, yeah, uh, so um, sometimes it depends on uh, if the um, uh, web page creator um, has, or the program creator has uh, given all the elements uh, proper names or automation IDs or you know, something concrete uh, to find the element by. Uh, but um, even if they haven't, usually there is a quite reliable way to, uh, uh, to get to the element. So for example, uh, when, um, uh, when, when automating um, um, login pages, for example. So you, you might have a um, uh, edit box uh, where you have to insert your username uh, mm -hmm. but it is usually preceded by the text username or something along the line so you can just uh, try to find the text username and then get the next element over which is okay. the edit element so i, I haven't uh, encountered an element that i cannot access in any way Cool. Okay. At least. Yeah, it's great to hear. What about when I, I know, you know, I, I used to do a lot of web scraping um, back, you know, um, at least five years ago with IE. And then there were a lot of event listeners that started really making it much tougher with IE to do stuff, uh, to actually trigger events, you know, and, and trigger things programmatically. Um, does UIA have any sort of issues with that as far as you know, hitting like the submit button, or or even when you place text there for the for the program to actually realize there's text there when you hit submit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, 
Sometimes uh, there might be problems. Um, usually you can uh, find the proper button uh, that already has um, the, uh, the invoke pattern uh, built into it. So you can just call click on it and uh, the click method uh, will internally call the invoke uh, method, okay. uh, invoke pattern, uh, pretty much clicking, clicking it. Gotcha. Um, but, uh, but I also have added uh, functions to get around that. Uh, if it uh, if it doesn't exist, so for example, uh, you can uh, control click elements as well. Uh, if you um, if you find uh, an element with any of the find fun uh, methods, uh, then you can uh, get the location of the element relative to the window yeah. of the screen, right? Yeah. And then you can use control click to target that element. Okay. So. I think in any case, you can somehow click it. It just depends on how, uh, how pretty the implementation is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it, I, I was just curious because it, it was always problematic um, for me. And then when I did, I think, a series of like eight videos with GeekDude for his Chrome.hk class, and it was really interesting was... On every website we went to, I said, hey, okay, for this edit field, how would you do this? And he's like, well, we need to go look at that website and see what, like, you know, what types of JavaScript, whatever, you know, they have running in the, what libraries they have in the background. Um, and it was just so much more complicated than with IE doing it. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think with the UIA approach, it's, it's really not because it's, like you said, you have the IDs to the things and you're just putting your text there and it, you're not messing with the behind the scenes. You're on that surface layer, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's um, it makes it much easier. Cool. Yeah, yeah we were. Um, it. I, I can't just can't tell you how excited I am to to be able to uh, keep continue on learning how to use it and b build some you know tools that are you've already got the the dump functionality, but you know a little bit more stuff to make it simpler for people that don't program a lot, right? Because I, I think right. this tool, you could really make like a, a decent macro recorder, kind of like pull over macro recorder and, and have it clean up a little bit of stuff, which is usually what you need to do. But it should be, you know, very reliable compared to image search type, you know, things. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I agree. Uh, the idea of uh, creating a macro creator uh, has been proposed to me already, but uh, um, unfortunately, I'm just limited by time and energy. So, um, since the main UAA um, library still has a lot of bugs and kinks to work out, and I'm uh, still focusing on that, but maybe uh, at some point in the future. Yeah, we um, and I don't know if I haven't done a video on this yet, but uh, you know, there's in. And I think it was in Windows 8. I may be wrong on that, but there's a Windows Steps Recorder, if I recall correctly. Have you ever played with that? Um, no, I haven't. So it's it's built into most Windows computers, I think, from 8 on. And it, it's a macro... Well, it's not. Let me rephrase it. It's usually used to document problems, right? So you you hit record, you go do what you want, you hit end... It takes screenshots of stuff and, and stuff, but what's really, really interesting is it gives you UIA like identifiers on what you did, right? So mm -hmm. it almost takes some of the stuff that you would want to have for your macro, right? If you could just pull out those kind of things um, and then have it automatically convert that into what actions to actually click on them and do whatever. Um, I, I think it's a good start, at least. I wouldn't use it entirely, but it was like, hey, this is, you know, it the code for that compared to you know a normal macro recorder it's it's much more con they did a great job of limiting um what's being captured it's not all this crazy mouse movements and you know activating windows and um all this other stuff that, that sounds very interesting uh, yeah. why haven't i heard of it before <laughs> well, it, well it's it's so crazy because yeah it's like i said it's it's default on most computers i think now and if you just if you start typing let me see here um Step, yeah, steps recorder. So just type steps recorder in your run menu. Um, you should see it. 
and uh, and yeah, it's 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 not the you know best thing in the world, but I'll tell you the fact it's built in, it, it's really cool. The other thing, anyone watching this, if you're talking to someone over the phone and, and you're trying to understand what's going on and they they're using a computer, have them do this and send you the file because it, like I said, it takes screenshots automatically and it tells you you can really get a much better grasp of documenting what they're doing. Um, it, it's a great easy way to kind of get a gist of what's going on. I'll definitely take a look at it later. Well, so let's finish up. Well, not finish up, but um, go go there a little more. As far as uh, next steps and stuff, do you have any plans? Are you just debugging? What, what's your plan for UIA, you know, your involvement? Uh, yeah, so uh, for now, I'm uh, mostly debugging. Uh, the next step uh, would be to add some more functionalities to the UIA viewer. Uh, so um, at the moment, uh, it uh, it just uh, displays all the available properties and uh, patterns. But I'd also like to add um, uh, functionality to call all the different methods available. So um, something like uh, the accessibility insights task, where you can, yeah. um, for example, use the value pattern to set values. So uh, I want to implement that. Um, and um, and there are still some more um, wrapper functions to write to make the use of uh, this library even even easier to avoid uh, going to the, all the all the different constants uh, that are needed and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Um, no, like I said, I, it's it just opens up so many doors. Have you used the? Uh, it, it uses the UIA technology. I think it's called mouse under text or something close to that. Mm, yeah, I, I have to, uh, taken a look at it, yes. Yeah, it, I was I was showing Isaiah it the other day and I'm like, it's, it's amazing because um, it almost negates the need for OCR, right? I mean, obviously if you're looking at a picture, it wouldn't work, but boy, you can rip the text out of almost anything, you know, easily. And, and that got, that's one of the first things I saw about this um, overall architecture where I'm like, this is amazing that it's all available like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think um, that the UIA browser uh, also has uh, functionality similar to it, so you can get all text from uh, web pages, for example. Uh, but you can uh, you can extend it uh, to pretty much uh, any application where you just uh, find all text elements, for example, get the names of them, and add them, add them all up. So then you would, yeah, get get all the all the content of the. Oh, I had one other question, and and I think we we know the answer to it, and I, it's just one I'm gonna throw out there. Is uh, the other day um, someone commented on one of my videos how slow it was, and what we think they were doing. It sounded from what they wrote, it sounded like they were always using like the dump all. Um, function or method to, yeah. to get a list of everything and then like every time they were doing it like in a loop kind of thing and, and we're like hey you know you don't ha once you understand that get that id you don't need to be doing you know it doesn't hopefully that usually doesn't change right but i'm curious yeah. on your experience have you run into where there's any sort of speed you know concerns or is it usually pretty quick there, there are definitely speed concerns um, okay um it um I also noted it in my um, in my main thread or the main main post of the thread uh, that uh, the the less find all functions you use, the better. Um, especially in larger programs where there are perhaps many thousands of elements av available. So um, if, if you call find all, for example, on the on the root element that is the desktop element, yeah, right. then it might fetch thousands and thousands of elements which yes. might just uh, crash the program for example and it would take a yeah. very long time to that is for, that, that is over true. all <laughs> elements uh, so so my recommendation usually is to use as 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 few find all calls as uh, as possible um, to use find first with um, no, as many conditions possible to locate that exact element that you need and no more because it's just much faster uh, that way. Now, I do have a little bit of a question. 
sometimes I've noticed that certain programs, uh, when I try to dump all the elements, for example, mm -hmm. from a specific program, I do not get many elements at all, which is actually um, interesting. Let me let me see if I could. Uh, I I was writing an example. Yeah, uh, for example, for a Skype, um, I just try to. Um, so let me let me show if that's okay. I'm going to share my screen real quick to see if you have actually ran into these type of issues before. So I just uh, let me see if I could make it a little bit bigger. So right now you can see that I just simply loaded the interface, got an element from handle, and the handle that I'm grabbing is Skype. And I think there are no other Skype executables about at all around. So let me let me get that so, first. I know that it actually kind of just, like just comes in a tree. You, um, yeah, go can ahead. Can you can you add um, two uh, to the second argument of element from handle? Element from handle, and then here we're gonna have two here. True. Is that what you're saying? True. True. Well, it could be anything in that case then. So let me let me double check something. Let me see if the thing doesn't tell me what. Let me just one second. So element from handle, it just allows me to put the handle only. I don't know if if it has a second parameter there. The element from handle, the definition just allows me to have one element. You have an earlier oh, version. Okay. okay, so I, th I think um, uh, I have uh, updated uh, the library uh, okay. at some point. It might happen, um, okay. So, so you can see the element from point um, yes, has, it has uh, a, sex a third suit. argument, activate right. chromium accessibility. Right, uh, so okay. So I think Skype is a chromium app. And yes, it, might it is, it is. Okay, so let me go ahead and verify um, what I've got because I think um, I, I have some polls from the original thing. Let me go ahead and stash my changes first and let me see if I can update it and see what, what I get. Okay, so let me just one okay. minute. Let me stash everything up. Um, Disclata, do you use VS Code? Um, Yes, um, <laughs> well, I, I think <laughs> I started using it uh, after seeing I say I say it's using. Oh, and really? I like the functionalities. He's made oh, oh, right. Notepad plus plus previously. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I actually came from Notepad plus plus as well. So that's yeah. that was my previous <laughs> um, um, thing. Let Let me just add a git ignore real quick. Let me just one second. And let me add there uh, just um, anything, right? So that it ignores that temporarily. And um, let me make this a new branch so that I could just save this up. Now that I have it. I want to see what you are in. So let's go ahead and take a look at main, check out my main branch. Oh, okay, so hold on. Exactly, let me pull the changes. Now my main, uh, my main uh, branch is actually in line with what you had because that's the problem. Mm -hmm. So it seems that I was a little bit old in the changes so let's go ahead and take a look at the interface now and if i look for element from handle now it yeah. has a second mm -hmm. yeah there it is so now now that i have that let's go ahead and take a look at my example again so i have the skype so right now my example is just uh showing me a few panes because these buttons down here these buttons up here are the minimize restore and close so those are yep. the standard buttons from windows but anything else is kind of like loading in this kind mm -hmm. of control pane so if i go ahead and set it up to true now uh, well i'm actually i already had it set to true so i'm getting the same answer i'm not getting any other not getting new information there let me just one second. I have a comma. Just one minute. Let me see if the 
this one here. So I have that a second parameter true. It is there, but it is not really um, giving me anything additional to what I'm looking for. And so I, I have noticed that in certain programs, I have this type of issues. Let me try and verify what happens if I have, for example, this is also a Chromium uh, based uh, program. So this is Spotify. Let me verify what the executable looks like. Spotify. Here we go. So I could just say Spotify. Um, let me remove the true first and see what I get. Again, I get a lot of pains here. And if I say true to that, I'm still getting the pains. So again, with this type of programs like Spotify, Skype, I get that. I think with Chrome might not be like that. So if I get Chrome here and I try, for example, uh, what is the title of this Google Calendar? Let me see, Google Calendar. Let me see what I get there. Uh, yeah, so this is this is Google Calendar. So so I just grabbed something inside Google, right? Yeah. And that, this one actually brought everything. So if it is if it is Google Chrome, for example, if it is a Chromium app, it seems to be able to load it, even if I do not use the true that you just mentioned here. So I just wanted to know if you had actually experienced this before. Let me see what type of window this is, by the way. Let me take a quick peek at what type of window this is. Right. It is a Chrome widget, but the thing is that this is zero, not the same as here that you might see that this is Chrome widget Windows 1. So there is a little bit of a difference. If you are targeting classes directly with this name, it might not target these guys because they're a little bit different in what they're named. Let me see Skype and what, what I get. Well, Skype is Chrome widget Windows 1. So th there is uh, something interesting about what they are, and some of them I can access them without issues, some others I cannot, and I don't know if you have actually experienced that before. I, I, I have actually experienced uh, the same problems. Um, for me, I think um, setting, uh, setting the true uh, worked, and uh, I actually just uh, right now tested it on my computer as well, and uh, it uh, displays uh, all the elements for Skype uh, just fine, all the all the messages and text inside of it. Um, mm. So uh, I, I think um, uh, I think sometimes uh, the programs um, aren't uh, getting activated um, per se. Uh, no. by the program uh, properly. Uh, sometimes I have found that uh, using the accessibility insights and uh -huh. uh, hovering uh, with the mouse over uh, over the window uh, somehow forces the UI um, UIA to be enabled and then all the programs start working. So can okay. you perhaps try that? Let me double check on that. And quick thing, by the way, uh, what I have noticed as well is that most of those programs are built in a way that the main executable is here, but it actually launches other executables. So it might happen that this one here, the one that is 186, 000, uh, 186 megabytes, this is the one that is holding all the windows. But when I use WinExist, it actually grabs the handle from the main um, executable. That that might happen. So I, I haven't played with that particular aspect yet because I would assume that I would get different information if I tried to use UIA in the different instances. And I might do that with the PID. I can get the PID to get the handle and actually, then go ahead and try that. Um, quite quickly play around with it uh, because um, in my GitHub, in addition to UI Viewer, uh, there is another tool. I think it was UI 3 Viewer or something. Can you check if it exists in your... So let me double check. So I do see... Yeah, let me just one second. Um, I had the... Yeah, Tree Inspector yeah, is what you mean. Right. Yeah. right. You can open that one. Uh, 
if you Skype. uncheck the visible uh, visible um, uh, checkbox uh, in the down part then uh -huh. you can see all the Skype executable. All right. So the, the first Skype that I was looking at, so when I clicked on this one that says Skype here, yeah. it just gives me the panes uh -huh. exactly the same way as I was actually looking at when I did the, the, the message box dump all, which is, this is actually a very a better tool. Yeah. I actually like this one a little bit more because not only I get some information here, but I get also the, the, yeah. um, um, the tree view of what it would look like. It, it is awesome. Now, um, if I go ahead and use uh, one of the others, yeah. Skype. So let's go ahead and take a look at. Oh, I cannot jump to the S. Uh, yeah, here it is. Skype. Um, I thought you can sort they, by name by clicking on the proof. Yeah, that's the, right. I thought that they were sorted automatically, but that's the only one that is going. <laughs> that's the only one that is showing up. Now, notice that Zoom meeting, Zoom has different executables mm -hmm. here, which is actually part of one of the things that I had issues with, um, kind of like trying to automate or something like that. Yeah, this one has a different, right? But this is just the buttons and nothing else. But probably, ah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Now I get more. So it is, it is exactly as I was suspecting. There is a, 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 a child executable that contains the things that I want. And uh, I'm just targeting the, the main one. And the main one doesn't have the, the, the things that I'm looking for. Now, for example, this one is the cloud meetings. It just has to minimize, close, and maximize. Yeah. But if I go to another one, it gives me something else, the video container, you know, so basically it is, it, it is as I was suspecting, maybe a child executable might help me out here, but for some reason in this particular list, I can only see one Skype. I cannot see the other ones, yeah. even so though this, this the list task is manager everything actually... that the other hotkey can see. So... All right. Okay. So auto hotkey <laughs> cannot see those. Okay. Now, now I can definitely tell that there are different ones available, right? Yeah. Um, but it's it looks like, and I would bet that this is the one. I, I could just grab the PID, for example, and try to get the handle of that one and see what happens when I do that. So, hey, what are you doing? Well, ninety-two seventy-six. I think I could get a handle from PID. There might be a. Let me double check on that real quick. PID. So this process gives me a PID, but um, process, I could get the handle of a window, and I want to know. Right. And win get, I think it is called win get. We can get, and one of the things that I can get is the handle, but the problem is I want to know if I could get it from the PID. Oh, well, yeah, because the, the win title can be HKPID, I think. So the win name, the Windows name, title, title of a window, I think I could use the PID in there, like HKPID, let me just one second, win title here. Ah, uh, yeah. So I could use HKPID. So basically, I could also say WinExist with the PID here, WinExist, and I would use the PID instead of, of the name of the executable. That's what I'm going to try. So HKPID 9276. I think I could do that, right? Um, according to this, 9276. That's good. Um, and that should give me a handle yes, right there. And it would, let me just one second. Hey, the age, let me see the age. Okay. So it seems to be that it's not grabbing that just one minute. Oh yeah, that's empty. That that didn't find it. Oh, that's interesting. HKPID. Now let me try it with the other one, with the main one. So probably I cannot access that that uh thing. which is what earlier he said, right? Right, exactly that. It might be that 4472. 4472. 
if I run it again. Oh yeah, I can get I can get that one, but I cannot get the other one. So for some reason, that particular part of Skype is, there, is restricted. Is there any possibility it's run at an admin level or something? Mm. I don't think so because if it is admin, I, the whole the I whole know. thread, right? Like the whole thread of, might be. You know, how is that protected? I'm not really right, sure. Right, that's what I don't get. Yeah. Right, and how does the other program actually can be accessed? Because we tried with, um, what was it, Spotify that we looked at, and it had, like, I was able to access it. Um, are, are you sure uh, these are different uh, processes, not different threads? Right, it might be a different thread or something like that. Now, that that is something that I had never come to. Uh, I have never seen actually. So here, let me try that again. And it was what? Um, I, ah, Zoom. I'm sorry. So Zoom is one of those that when you look at it. So if I go to the task manager um, and I look for Zoom, you will notice that Zoom is actually threaded into two pieces. And this one here up the top is the first one that doesn't get anything, right? Now, let me try with Zoom if I can get the, the threaded one, 6360. 6360. Did I say 60? Yeah, exactly. Let me try this one. Um, that's not the one that I wanted to run. It's this one here. Yeah, that one I can access it, even though it's threaded. Okay, so it is below the main. So even even if it is the is is below the main executable, not the same of what is happening with Skype. So again, the tools, the UIA tool has certain limitations, um, and basically the limitation is if if Auto Hotkey cannot see the handle of that thing, you will not hey, be able to access it with it. <laughs> I, hey, uh, Isaiah, use the the inspect tool. Right, inspect. So, you mean this one here, right? Right. Um, right. Um, now that is for Skype. Now Skype. So, so this is the other thing, and Auto Hotkey can do this too. If I hover my mouse over a an element, it will get the information for it, and I can do that without a hotkey. I can get the element under the mouse and I can actually grab it and do something with it. What I cannot do is list all the elements of Skype. And in certain situations, like for example, uh, what we were trying to do, which is like getting the names of certain people, like I would have to first list what the what this whole thing has because I don't know in advance what I'm looking for. Right. So I would have to list it first. And that's where what I was trying is failing. I cannot list the elements. Um, I would have to actually get the one under the mouse. And sometimes, well, I don't want to be one by one just going by <laughs> by their name. So, so basically, insofar I cannot access the whole list, what I was trying to do was it's not going to be possible. And I'm noticing now that it's just because I cannot get the handle to it. I cannot just pick at it. And it happened with Skype, but it doesn't happen with Zoom. With Zoom, I can access it, right? So it depends. It, it, there are some limitations, and it is not based on the UI automation library itself. It looks like it is auto hotkey. Auto hotkey cannot access that. And if you can't, then you can't, you know? Uh, can, you, can you just try something for me, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, can yeah, sure. you open the Skype window, uh, then inspect it with the inspect tool? Right, yeah, sure. And then run the dump all function on the window. So I'm sorry. So I'm going to inspect it with this tool, or you mean with a yes. with the yes. right? This so. tool. Okay, thank you. And right. then uh, now, can you try um, running the script again with the dump all? Without okay, so like, right. Okay, okay. Let me let me let me do that. So uh, let me just one second. What we're going to do is change this to hk exe skype. Yeah, oh, skype. The exe i don't have to stop anymore just have to put it just in case and that i'm going to be passing it here and the dump all so this is what you're looking for but that is yeah. uh, with skype open i'm yeah. inspecting right. it right so that is good and i know why you're doing that because sometimes if the window is minimized 
it will not work. But in this case, it doesn't have anything to do with that. The window can be on and open and it will not actually basically it's because i'm accessing the wrong handle this thing here this h that i'm getting the handle for this handle that i'm getting is wrong that's what is basically that's what it boils down to let me see if i can prove it by showing the handle of this thing can i take a look at the handle properties probably i could see the properties of it Yeah, but for some reason, when I try to open the, the properties for Skype, it stops responding. That's interesting. So Skype is a special application there. I can tell for sure. Let me see if I have that issue with other programs, just in case. I have never actually had this before. It actually froze up. Oh, no, I don't need that. Well, so my computer just hanged. <laughs> Let me just one minute. Um, I cannot bring the inspect tool either. This whole thing is crashed. Hmm. Yeah. So, so I, I just tried to access some part of Skype yeah. and my computer didn't like that. So uh, what I would say, Skype is a different thing. It's a different type of application. The section that contains the windows um, I am not able to get the handle to it directly for some reason with auto hotkey. <clears throat> when I use other functions like get the element under the mouse, yeah, I could access the elements. They are there, right? But I cannot get the handle to that window. And for that reason, I cannot list all the things that it has. That's that's the, the point that is happening. And when you use like Skype.exe, the handle that you're getting is of the parent window, not the one that has the windows themselves. So that's that's what is going on. And it is something that um, I didn't know if you had actually uh, experienced that yeah, before. But I have experienced it. Um, I had exactly the same problem with uh, Skype in the beginning uh, when I started out. Uh, but uh, then I, I did something. <laughs> I'm not totally sure what happened, uh, but it kind of activated Skype. And uh, now, for some reason, it works uh, works totally fine. It displays uh -huh. everything. I use the same script, um, AH, AH, e, um, uh, exe, and everything. So, so, so you and it, it displays everything. You definitely <laughs> activated something by mistake, but you don't know what it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure. Yet. <laughs> no, but but, but still, uh, still, uh, <laughs> going through the source code for the accessibility insights to see what uh -huh. it's uh, doing okay. exactly. You know. Okay, um, okay. we can try that and see that. and see what happens. But basically, <laughs> let me let me try and show you something. Um, let me double check uh, this real quick before I see something. Uh, so as you can tell, I, I'm not sure if you can see my screen now. I can. Right. So right now, I, I just made the script. So you know if. Skype is active, which is the same. I, I just commented out what I had before. So if Skype is active, I will get the mouse position and just get an element from the X and Y locations and dump its information. And when using that, I do get the information for the element. So it is not that it's not really accessible. It is there and I can access it. Um, but, but I cannot access the main, the parent window that contains all the elements for some reason. That's all. Uh, yeah, so that's a very good point. Uh, sometimes yeah. um, UIA elements cannot be accessed at all when the window isn't visible. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I have noticed that. Yes, that, that yeah, is true. For example, with Chrome, uh, if it is totally covered by another window, then no UIA element is uh, visible. Oh, but all. that's that's interesting because, yeah. and actually, Joe, I don't know if you remember that part of the thing that I was mentioning with with the example in resolve is that if resolve was minimized yeah oh yeah right right if it was minimized like the controls are not there but I had it open with something else covering it and it it did work right and I was expecting that 
Chrome would do the same, like if Chrome is open. Right. Now, when you minimize it, what happens is there is something special that happens with it. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but Windows get moved outside of your of your screen so so if your screen is 1920 by 20 uh, like like your your width and height of the screen is certain the the window is moved to a minus a negative number so it would, if you check the windows positioning for that particular window it would show negative and it is very easy to show maybe later i would do a video on that but basically it goes to the negative area and it sets some some styles for the window saying that they're not visible that happens when you minimize the window. Now, if you have it uh, not minimized, if it is restored or if it is maximized and you have other things on top of it, they are still on your desktop and they're still visible, but they're covered by another window and you can still access everything. It's just when you minimize it that it just goes away and you cannot access it at all. And that is done to save memory. When, a, when the window is not visible, all its controls are put in a state that they don't they don't um, use that much memory, I think. I don't know if that is exactly how it works, but I know that is to conserve memory that they do that. But uh, I know that the UIA interface is affected if the window is not, if the window is minimized. That is something that I, I ran into that myself. That, that is definitely but, true that usually when a window is minimized, um, you cannot access uh, the elements at all. Right. And yeah. um, for uh, for Chrome, for example, uh, if you take a look at the UIA browser library, right, uh, I have a method there called East Browser Visible. Oh, right, and, yeah. And that yeah. method gets called before, for example, get current URL. Uh, and if the browser isn't visible, then uh, it is automatically, automatically activated. So right. otherwise, the methods wouldn't work at all. So these are uh, I, in here. I have I have an outline of the functions that you can use. Um, so for Joe, this is the part that we were asking about. Like for yeah. example, um, we can reload the page and probably new tab. Um, we have home, forward, and for navigation. So um, I do not see anything Super. for navigating. There's the is browser. Uh, so, yeah, we discussed that uh, with Joe a little bit, but uh, if, if you want to uh, navigate, uh, then, then you know, here, maybe. No, no. If you if you want to navigate to a new page, you can uh, call the um, uh, set URL function. Ah, okay, uh, set um, set URL. Here it is. So the set URL and you have the second navigate. second parameter says navigate to it. So you can set yeah. the thing and navigate so for your navigation then you would you would send a control send yeah. and because, it, uh, yeah. unfortunately it isn't possible to invoke or uh, or click or call enter, right exactly uh, i noticed that i actually was uh, uh, explaining that in one of the videos because when you use the inspector tool or the accessibility tool it doesn't matter which one you use um, one of the things that you can tell is what you can do with the control. This is something that it is good that you're here. But basically, if you select um, a specific um, control, let me see something. Oh, no, hold on. I just deactivated it here. So at the bottom, you can tell which patterns you can use. And if there's one that is called invoke, like this one, the invoke pattern, this is the one that actually goes ahead and does an action. In this case, it would be clicking. But if you go to the URL here on top, you do not have an invoke pattern. You can set the text or you can set the value of it, but you cannot actually hit enter because there might be a button, a hidden button that is the go button. That's what I'm is going on. No, no, I haven't found it, but you can actually go ahead and take a look at them in here. And if there is no button here name, named go, then I don't know. But basically, it looks like, um, yeah, there is no no native way of setting it and going there. You would have to send the enter key for it to kind of like activate anyway. So you were doing exactly the same as I ended up doing yeah. in the end. Yeah. And um, uh, one, one other case uh, uh, where I found that elements uh, cannot 
Peace team in every case is um, is Microsoft Teams actually. So if you um, if you start a new meeting in Microsoft Teams, uh, there's the toolbar where you yes. can, um, for example, give reaction, right? right? Like yeah. likes and whatnot. So those toolbar buttons are uh, are generated lazy. So they they are only generated right. if you hover over them with your mouse or call the element from point uh, meta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you if you want to access all the buttons there, then you need to, you need to move the, the mouse over. Element, right. You, you have to actually move element from point. <laughs> right yeah. actually actually um joe we were talking about this in the hk heroes uh session yeah. i was actually mentioning that that is a very common way of kind of like saving resources which is loading stuff just when it's needed not all at once and this is he's just mentioning one example of when they do those kind of things we just went ahead and uh, uh discussed that a little bit and here it is this is one of the instances where that would happen just the the, the buttons just show up when you actually hover the mouse over them, kind of like they don't they don't really exist now um for the browser here i was just I wanted to ask though, um, when you do navigate, does it wait for the page to load, or do you have? To I was just gonna out? ask something similar. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, like for the navigation here, when the when the page is loading, does it wait for it? <laughs> no, you have to call the wait page load function for that. Thank you. Let me double check. I do see here that wait title change wait page load. This is the cool. one that you're referring to. Yeah. So you have a different. Can you specify here the after additionally for after the page has loaded? Okay, I get it. I, what I do like about your code is that you at least have documentation. I <laughs> 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 see. Yeah, because because the, uh, for for most of the functions. So when when I went ahead and did this real quick, I I noticed that most of the functions that are not really um, kind of like self-explanatory because there's some things that are self-explanatory right but there's some others like js execute well java execute javascript that that's very you know self-explanatory but there's some others that i noticed that um yeah one one quick thing i don't know why but um vs code is uh indentation sensitive when you're folding stuff so you're folding here is not gonna fold if this is not in the correct indentation. So you have to put it after it so that then the fold actually works correctly. And when you put that indentation, you can use the L trim to just remove the extra space at the beginning. So you could just do that at whatever you want, that just in case you have these issues with folding. And I, and I have noticed that there's a few of them that are not folding correctly due to certain types of indentation issues it's just the indentation what is wrong um so um i was just saying that uh, what i noticed is that whenever i opened i had you know like comments so most of the times when I, I was just going to ask you about that i double click on it and i already have my answer so i don't have to be asking all the time what does this do what why do i need that this is great that uh, that is actually that saves a lot of time and it is excellent i really like that <laughs> um so those uh, those uh, questions will probably come up uh, with the main uh, UAA interface uh, library. Oh man, uh, yeah. There are just too too many functions to document properly that you just have to open the Microsoft uh, documentation. <laughs> you just look at it uh, on the Microsoft documentation. Yeah, but um, with these kind of things, like for yeah, there are way too many functions. The person who was writing the function should have been like write the function and write the comment up top, write the function, write the comment up top. They they just concentrated on the functions first and then the documentation, but that's too many. Now, um, one of the issues that I had in here was that some of the of the functions like um, uh, find first by here, you have an expression, right? And I right. was looking for find all by, so this one here it says like find all using an expression containing the desired conditions and i was like 
I didn't know what the expression was. And the, now, actually, I don't know if you actually uh, updated it because I when did, I did update it. Right, yeah, because when I after I saw you had trouble with it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that was the point. Like I was like, yeah, where can I find information about the expression? I don't know what to put here. <laughs> but actually, uh, this, this, uh, now you have a comment that at least tells you where to find the information. That's great because now I could just go uh, there and just take a look at the expression, how we could use it, and that's great, you know. <laughs> but. In any case, that is a good, um, it is a really good library. I have been playing a little bit with it. Now I have hit some, I have tried several programs, but with Zoom and Skype, I noticed that I had some trouble specifically because they have these elements inside a child window type of thing. When that happens, like you, you have no control over it. There is this share window, the screen that when you when you open the new share window, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a there's a, a this new window. This here is kind of like a separate entity from Zoom. So when I got the Zoom executable uh, handle, that handle does not contain these controls. Actually, none of these handles do. After I found the three handles, the main handles, after I got them, this particular window is not is non none of those. This looks like a different window, and all of the controls here have to be listed separately. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do with, that. With uh, with UI automation, actually, the thing is, uh, in most of my examples, um, I I use the element from uh, handle or element from point uh, methods, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, but you can actually just um, get the root element and then uh, use the, the find methods on that, the root element. Uh, the, oh, right, the, the root of element. element right? right, right. So but, you can but this is the point. To locate right. your Zoom uh, window. Okay, you hold can. on, because this is, this, is the other, this is the other thing. So the root element, you're talking about the desktop in this case? Yes. Okay. Now, so... so, so from there, I would have to find this window, yeah. which so I don't know if you can, I don't know you if can it... just um, uh, use get root element and uh -huh. then find yeah. first by name, for example, to find an element anywhere on the desktop. Or in any oh, field. okay, yeah, right. okay, I get it, because I am actually right now just um, right here. I'm actually limiting my search to those handles. Exactly. But what you're saying is I could, instead of limiting myself, I could use the desktop, the root uh, element, yes. and you find first by name with the name screen one, for example. For like example. Just, yes. Right, just find the one that says screen one. I, th I think the name is, is a little bit longer than that. It's not that, but... Or you can use the Zoom uh, window title name, right? Uh, select the window or application that you want to share. That's is, right, there, right there. is there any chance that approach would work with our Skype issue? Uh, probably Again, not. I know because Auto Hotkey cannot access it. It, it is Auto Hotkey that cannot access the whole thing. But um, so Auto Hotkey can list all the windows except for those for some reason. And actually, it was really apparent when when I opened the second script that he has, the Tree Inspector. That one also has the same issue as I was having. So mm -hmm. it is not about UIA. It is actually out of hotkey that cannot access it. Well, I was just thinking maybe taking a different path might actually show them, but that, okay. Yeah, but in this case, it doesn't matter which path you take. That particular thing, you cannot access it for some reason. But I, I would assume that this one I could. So basically, when you say find first by here, I'm actually limiting it to that particular handle. But um, can I get like element from handle root? Is that something doable? Like, for example, root. Let's go ahead and say. No, it's not a function at the moment. But uh, uh, you can, I think, um, get the root element and then uh, find first uh, with conditions. Uh, right, but uh, this is the thing. How do I get the root element? Get root. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yep. I got my root element. And now, down here, this is where it's failing, which is, you know, sharing, you know, find first by name, share screen one. Now, what I could do is actually uh, here, I could use the root element instead, right? 
Now, yeah. the interesting part, and I don't know if, if you can answer this up off the top of your head. Um, I know that the current bound re bounding rectangle is kind of like an object, isn't it? Um, like yes. it, it returns an object, but I don't remember what it, what left, top, right, and bottom. Is that like the, the yes, letters? Exactly. Left, top, right, and bottom. Okay. So, so then... They are, um, um, this is how the original UIA libraries are. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, that yeah. is something that if you want feedback, I would actually improve a little bit on that because I think in our hotkey, when we have this, um, this uh, left, right, top, I'm, I'm not really yeah. sure if we use that that often, do we? Um, so that's that's why I actually uh, wrote the function uh, get current post or get current position, which will right. return um, x, y with height. All oh, right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, the, what I meant is instead of using just the letters like L and T, maybe the 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 the, the whole word is okay. Left and top is a little oh. bit easier to oh, kind of okay. like remember what they are. Um, yeah. But L T, I, I was kind of like wondering a little bit about that. But here's the thing. Let me just go ahead and um, comment everything out. Like I don't need any of this right now. I just wanted to find this guy here. Didn't I move it? I didn't move it. Okay, so I just want to test this real quick. Um, let me double check on this. I had issues clicking on certain elements as well, by the way. Um, the debug, this is what I want to do. Um, and let's just stop right there. Yeah, there you go. It did find it. Yep. <laughs> and it was amazingly fast because I'm actually looking the whole... <laughs> so, And this is actually one of the things that I might uh, always kind of like um, think about the efficiency mm -hmm. of those type of things. Um, yeah. As he mentioned, there will be thousands and thousands of elements if you're looking at the root. So if I'm just finding the first one that has that name and it found it in less than a second, that's really good. That 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 means you're not gonna have any issues. I'm double checking. Just please don't run find all on the root element. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm just checking if the if the values here change. They do. The only thing is that I'm I'm finding them weird. Uh, yeah, because I'm not in the screen. Yeah. So, so coordinate mode. Um, I think this would be. Yeah, I don't know if that has, uh, is a mouse or something but basically what i needed mouse it is kind of like screen screen yes. right but i'm not really sure if that applies to what i'm doing right now because i set the window right here and, and i'm getting very high values for y so i'm like what the heck why yeah there we go 500 700 still 500 700 for this is it's not mm -hmm. true Oh, well, no, because, well, it's down here. This is where it's starting to get it. Right, left and top. Yeah, that's right. So in general, I'm not really sure where it's actually <laughs> uh, doing it, but I know that it's working at least. So I know that it's working. And it, this was one of the things that I didn't know how to do. And this actually helped me because that means that sometimes instead of actually getting a lot of uh, different uh window names or window handles i could use the window handle if i could get a list of all of them if i don't find it there then just go ahead and look for the root element and find it there that's a good yeah, yeah cool and you can uh, avoid the problems with um, the mouse movements or clicking uh, by using the click function but yeah. uh, specifying the button as left then it will use the mouse move uh, Function. Oh, it would do it for me. So I don't have to use the yeah, function myself. Exactly. Oh, right. Okay. Awesome. Right. Okay. Awesome. And you don't have to worry about coordinates or anything. <laughs> right. Uh, well, yeah. the first time when I actually uh, took a look at the library, the click function didn't have any parameters. So that might be new. I'm not really sure. Let me see. Hold on. Which button clink? Uh, right. So that part, I'm, I, I don't, I didn't remember using that any at all, at all. I always use the click by itself. But yeah, I will test it. So if I just say left, it would go ahead and use the the click function instead of using the the invoke parameters, right? 
Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, there it is. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, well, thank you, Biscolata. That obviously helps us uh, yeah. save a lot of time trying to work through it ourselves. And, and yeah. obviously, we shared the video, and people both shared the same time as well. That is right. As you uh, make tweaks and, and add new functionality, if you you know want to just jump on with us, we're happy to talk through it. It might you know, th I find it much easier to to have me talking to someone else than doing it on your own. It makes it more interactive and fun. So, we're, I'm happy to you know help facilitate if it helps. Definitely, if you, if you have some uh, examples to go through, for example, to cool. uh, start making. Uh, more yeah, we we were we and we've still been really busy. Um, and then someone had mentioned it. And I'm like, hey, let's go. You know, um, Dimitri mentioned this thing. Let's go take a, at least a quick look at it. And yeah. then he looks and he's like, hey, this looks really good. And so, correct me if I'm wrong. I think like that hour we made of our first video. Just we just said let's just make a video on it. And then we did yeah. one like every day or several several. But um, yeah. yeah, we didn't get into the weeds of it you know which is what we need to do um but thank yeah. you for the hand holding to walk through some of that stuff yeah so basically when when you have a little bit of time to kind of like show if you have examples of your own i actually that's i think the best you can do is if you have examples just go through them because we could see working examples of it because what i have been doing is actually creating examples just yep. to test it <laughs> But I haven't actually worked on a project myself. And the one the one time that I tried, I faced the issue with Skype. <laughs> so that's, that's, this, is a, this is the thing. When, when, it, when I actually tried it, now I find something that I have never seen. And now I am understanding a little bit better what it is. At that moment, I didn't know what the heck was happening. But, um, uh, but if you have working examples, a great way that you can do is just go ahead and share them. And actually, one of the things that um, Joe is doing is just putting the voice out of what Arrowhead Kit can do. And if you have an example, that's great because people can look at something working and they would say like, oh, I want, I could, I could do something like well, that. It's <laughs> one of the things people, they only, most, most don't want to just read a forum post. You know, it's sad, but um, the vast majority of people want to be spoon fed and, and they want the example to be in something they're doing. Like it's gotta be so similar for them to understand it's relevant to them. Mm -hmm. Right. It, it, it's a bummer, but it's just human nature. Right. So that's why we make a lot of videos and hope people get that. Yep. That is we, I really nice. appreciate your working on this because it's going to help a lot of people. Yep. Including us. Yeah, if you want, we can uh, we can uh, start uh, going through the um, eighteen examples provided in the um, uh, GitHub. Uh, yeah, I, I did um, use those, and I wanted to yeah. kind of like um, for myself, they were great because I actually know more or less how it works. But mm -hmm. um, um, I'm not really sure if some of them are a little bit too complex for me to show it up for certain people because the the, the point is. Um, if you know how it works, you know how to explain it. I see the example. I understand it, but I don't know it. So when I try to explain it, I might confuse people a little bit more. But if you can go through them, that would be great because you know what you're talking about. You know? Exactly. Right. right. So I might try to make some very simple examples. And some yeah, they very were. Complicated examples uh, to yeah. uh, both the words, right? <laughs> but yeah. Cool. Well, we, and we don't have to do it today. It's just it. it yeah. I was thinking more at some point, um, uh, especially when you add new functionality or whatever. It, it sometimes it's really fun. The cool thing about Isaiah is he gets it, you know, like that, right? So I know for a lot of people, you share stuff, and then correct me if I'm wrong. Like you'll post something in the forum, and then you're like, "This is amazing," and no one comments. You know, like it, it's like hello. Yeah. hello? Um, yeah, like it is really amazing. You you don't understand it, but it is really, really, really amazing. <laughs> but it, it, it's uh, it's fun when you can actually talk with someone who gets it. I, I know that firsthand, and so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to go take a nap because this was a crazy <laughs> busy morning for me. Um, yeah. But thanks again, Desclado. Again, thank you for the work on it too. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Alan. Perhaps uh, talking to you. meet you again some other time. It'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.